Well, welcome to another edition of Eagles Coaches Masterclass presented by Lincoln Financial Group. I'm Fran Duffy, joined by Eagles linebackers coach Ken Flagel. Coach, welcome here to the segment. I'm excited to dive into the definition of run fits because I feel that that's a, a term that gets thrown around a lot by fans and by the media. And we don't all know exactly what is a run fit. How can you break it down for us in simple terms? Well, along the offensive front, you know, when the average fan looks at the offense, there's what we call gaps, you know, gaps in between the center and the guard and the guard and the tackle, tackle tight end. And in a gap control scheme, which we play at Philadelphia, everybody has a run fit. They have a gap that they're responsible for in the run game. And it's all dependent on, obviously, the spacing of the front, the front that you have and the coverage behind it. The defensive backs obviously have a run fit as well as the linebackers and the defensive line. So that's what we spend a lot of time on. You know, fortunately, we've been very good at it. I think over the last four years, I think pro football focus has us as the number one rush defense in the National Football League when you consider all the four years that Coach Peterson's staff has been uh, at the Eagles. So we take a lot of pride in it. We work on it very hard. But again, we believe it's part of the secret sauce to winning football games. Sure. And so real quickly, before we dive into some of this film, does it, I guess it changes by defensive call, like guys' responsibilities all change. So it's not like this linebacker is responsible for this gap on every single play, no matter circumstance. Well, there's a lot of variables. There's a lot of moving parts in it. Not only does it change by front and by coverage, but it also changes by offensive blocking scheme. All of a sudden now you could have a linebacker that you could say could be an A-gap player. He could have the center guard gap, and then all of a sudden they pull a lineman and his gap changes off the blocking scheme. So there's a lot of moving parts uh, that entail being in good run fits, but it could be as simple as the front and the coverage and the blocking scheme. And there, when you put them all together, there's it's a fast-flowing thing. Sure. Uh, well, let's get into the film here. Uh, what do you have for us? How are you going to try and uh, break down some of these run fits for us here uh, on the film? Well, the first one that we've got, and I just put what I consider to be some of the base runs that we get uh, versus our front. The first one is called dive solid. And as you can see right now, uh, 47 would be what we call a B-gap defender. All right. He has that guard tackle gap. That tackle that's next to him is what we call an A-gap defender. The linebacker, other linebacker, 54, is what we call a solo linebacker. He's an A-gap defender. The tackle to the left is a B-gap defender. We call him a three technique. And then between the C-gap, which is the tackle tight end gap, and the gap outside is handled either by 27 and the defensive end on that side. So this is just a dive solid play. If you let it run and then freeze it off the blocking scheme, I'll kind of explain to you what the offense is trying to get accomplished right now. What this is, is we call it dive solid because they're doubling our three technique right now. And that guard will come off on 54 when 54 attacks that A gap. We want 54 to get downhill and get the double team off of 91, off of Fletcher Cox. We're not going to ask Fletcher to sit there and try to anchor what we consider to be a 700 pound block. What they're doing on the weak side to the right side of the formation is they're X blocking. So if you run it back and then let it run again, you can see they're blocking back with the center on the two technique, our tackle, and they're taking their right guard or their left guard and blocking our defensive end and then releasing the tackle up to our linebacker. Everybody's putting that block on their left shoulder pad. 54's got to get downhill, get the double team. And really, at the end of the day, guys, it's as simple as everybody just owning their gap. It's what we call a solo run fit. We're in a, a coverage and a front that gives everybody one back, one gap. If you run it back one other time, you can see what they do is they end up bringing the wide out back inside to block 27. And then 31, Jalen Mills replaces off that crack block and he replaces in that gap. So we've got an eagle in every run gap along the defensive front right now. And as long as everybody can hold their gap, then we should have a good down going. So a, a couple of things there I want to hit up, hit you up on. So you mentioned uh, with the linebackers how important it is for those guys to, to flow downhill quickly. It's not just about their possibility of making the play, but of helping those defensive linemen you know, remove those double teams so Fletcher Cox isn't dealing with two offensive linemen at once. He's now able to get a one-on-one. It's no question, Fran. It becomes critical right now because, again, if 54 just sits there and pats his feet and doesn't come downhill, that guard will stay on the double team on 91. He will not come off on 54. 54 makes the guard come off of him. 
And again, the thing we don't want to happen is we don't want that double team to stay on 91 long, that it softens that run gap up. And and then all of a sudden there's leaky yardage. Instead of that plane being a one or a two yard gain, all of a sudden now it's four or five over the course of a game, over the course of a season, that really plays to the offense's advantage. We've got to get downhill. We've got to get the double teams off a of down lineman. And then that second part of it was what you mentioned at the end with uh, the gap replacing. How important is that part of it? You see Malcolm Jenkins is responsible for that C gap on that side, but as soon as he gets blocked by the receiver, how important is that for Jalen to recognize that he's in man-to-man coverage on a receiver who comes in and now he's got to replace? No doubt. The DBs have a run fit just like the linebackers have a run fit. Everybody's involved in the run game. And when offenses start uh, employing their wide receivers to be part of the blocking scheme, then it entails the defensive backs have to get more involved. Now they create extra gaps along the defensive front with the wide receivers. Now we have to replace them with DBs. Uh, A great example on that one uh, of overall just team run defense. Excited to get into this next one here. Uh, Another play to a different side of the formation. Yeah, we call this lead open, and it's an eye formation play. It's one of the two back runs that we get. Uh, surprisingly enough, you know, the NFL is getting away from a lot of two back runs, and we see more one back than anything else. But as people can see, uh, Detroit is coming off their goal line, so they want to get into a little bit more of a run oriented formation. But they get into this eye formation uh, to run what we call lead open. And what they're going to do is they're going to take that offensive tackle and block out on our right defensive end. And they're going to take that guard in the center to the right side. And they're going to double that two technique and try to get up on 53. Likewise, on the left side of the screen, they're going to take that guard in the tackle. And we call this a rub double. They're going to try to rub the three technique and eventually release that guard up to 52. They're going to take the fullback and they're going to try to bring the fullback and block 47. Now, we're in a front in a coverage that's going to make 47 what we call hammer the fullbacks block back inside the 53. So 53 is going to fit inside the fullbacks block. 47 is going to be outside the fullbacks block. And then 52 has this backside cutback in this closed A gap. Now, a lot of times we'll run him through because a lot of times that rub double that's on the three technique to our left, you can see right now he tries to come off late, but by that time he cannot stop the penetration of 52. So we've got an opportunity for a negative play. And down here on the goal line, you know, now you're banking on maybe getting a safety, getting two points for the good guys and making them punt the ball right back to you. So 47, when you run it back, is trying to hammer the fullback. They're going to try to bring the guard up eventually to 53. But as you can see, it gets real busy in there sometimes with all the bodies. But we get a good run through by 52, and that's how we fit it up. And then the defensive end to the left now becomes the C-gap player, and the safety outside of him plays for the deep cutback all the way to our left. When you have those two-back looks, Coach, and you have the young guys coming from college, some conferences, they're not seeing any two-back looks over the course of their entire college career. Does it take long to be able to coach those guys up on on how to read those looks once they get to the NFL? Yeah, I think that's a fair statement, Fran. I think it does. You're right. Uh, Offenses in college are moving away from two-back stuff. And uh, so it does. It's a little bit different for them. And to see Run plays with the quarterback under and not shotgun runs is a little bit new for the college (laughs) kids coming right because that's just that's just the way the college game has evolved. But yeah, uh, like I say, it becomes a little bit new for them. But we do, again, spend a lot of time on run fits, not only in practice, but I'll take individual drills with the defensive line and we'll card up uh, base run plays against our fronts. And so it's a constant education in how we're going to fit the run game up. So, Coach, before we get to this next play, I got to ask you, how important is it for those defenders, first level, second level, third level, everybody that's involved in the run fit to be able to recognize the run that's coming? They've got to be able to diagnose the play. How important is that in terms of the run fit? It's very important. Uh, I always talk to the linebackers in terms of, listen, you've got to have high speed Internet if you're going to play this game at the professional level. If you're a dial-up modem guy with your brain, you're not going to last very long. Or or if you do, I won't last very long. One of us is going to be out of the building in short order. Our play recognition, our block recognition becomes very critical in in our ability to defend the run and how quick we trigger off blocking schemes. Uh, That, again, is all part of the equation for playing good run defense. Sure. It was something that we saw in that last play with that run through uh, from number 52. Let's go. What's the next play you've got for us? 
Well, the next play that we get is what we call a crunch play. And if you can see that the Y or the tight end to the left is off the ball. And he has the ability to come all the way across the formation to block our right defensive end. We call this a crunch play. Now, this tight end that's off the ball is just like a fullback in our terms in the backfield. Wherever he is, he creates the extra gap on the defense. So if you can see 47 and 53 and 27, we're actually in our sub package right now is in what we would call a solo alignment. 47 right now has that open B gap to the right. 53 has that closed A gap to the left. 27 actually has the gap outside the tight end because that left defensive end is going to be in the crack gap between the tackle and the tight end that's off the ball. But when this tight end crunches back on his block in the run game, it forces everybody to fall back to the next available gap. That means 47, when this tight end comes back, is going to play off the right defensive end. If the right defensive end hammers the block, then 47 knows he's got to fit inside of him. If we can get that spilled with the right defensive end, then 47 would replace outside. It's going to bring 53 all the way back to this open B gap to the right side, and it's going to bring 27 all the way back into this closed A gap. So pre-snap communication by these guys, they just say, hey, alert the swap. And what they're telling each other is, is if this guy swaps back to block the edge to the right, we're all going to swap back and play the next available gap to the right. So we get a little bit leaky, but you can see where everybody's trying to go. The gap's got a little bit wide. If you take it back, everybody can see that there's wide receiver ghost motion now In our world right now, Fran, that's just eye candy. What the offense is trying to do, we call these distraction runs. They're trying to get your eyes to be on something that they shouldn't be. We all should be triggered in with the crunch block of the tight end, not with the wide receiver that's going in jet motion across to our right. That's going to get handled, as we see, by 34. 47 and 53 need to be tied in right now with the tight end as well as 27. Now, this is what we call this play. If you take it back one more time, they elect to crunch block it, but you can see they block out on our right defensive end and they crunch on 47. Well, we come back and 47 knows he's got to turn that back now into 53. 53 is rolling back into that open B gap and then 27 has got to get into that closed A. Very simple run game. But again, everybody's got to get tied in with the tight end that creates the extra gap. So, Coach, the one big thing that you hit on there, that I, and you've hit on it really on a couple of plays here, when the guys are taking on blocks downhill at, at the linebacker position, they're not just going kamikaze, I'm just going to blow this guy up. They have to be cognizant of which shoulder they're going to use to attack to try and force the ball one way or the other. they got to know where their help is in the in the front and in the coverage. And, and again, 47 knows that he's got to put this ball back to 53. If that tight end came all the way across, then there wouldn't be all the lead blockers or the blockers would come out of the front. But again, 47 is well aware of where his help is and where he needs to put this ball. Yeah, we see the plays like this work for the Eagles offense so often where they're able to kind of out leverage the defense and try to find that crease. And there uh, the crease was able to be stopped. Let's get to some old fashioned power run game here. We've got the tight end to the right. All right. And we call this power O closed. And power is a term that a lot of coaches in the NFL will use, and it really entails that there's a double team on your three technique. So what we're going to see here to the right side of the formation is our defensive tackle. He's hidden a little bit by 47. They're going to double him, and that guard now is going to eyeball 53, all right? So they're going to double the three technique back to 53. They're going to block the defensive end with the tight end. All right, they're going to pull the offensive guard, their right offensive guard left as we see it. They're going to pull him up on 47. And then they're going to try to dig out Malcolm Jenkins, number 27, with that cut split by the wide receiver that we see to the right side of the screen. Again, our extra man in the run game right now is 27. All right, so we always usually in our eight man fronts have a free hitter on the down. So what we're asking 47 to do is scrape the double team tight and spill the offensive guard to 27. 53 now, if you take it back, going back to what we had on the dive solid, we said that we don't like the defensive lineman to have to anchor double teams. We're going to run 53 through on the front side A-gap. 
that's going to force their guard to have to come off on 53, which is going to make it easier for the three technique. Now he's not anchoring that 700 pound block. Now where we get sideways on this one, guys, is 27 needs to stay inside the crack block of the wideout with the corner replacing outside. I think you'll see that 27 jumps outside the crack block. And right there, there's that little crease. Now the corner would have to replace off of them, but we would rather have that go a gap wider so the corner is not making a sideways tackle on a real talented running back. So when you play it all back right now, and again, not to take anything away, this is a very talented back that the Giants have, but we're going to ask 47 to scrape the double team, 27 went inside the crack block, 53 on the run through to get the double team off the three technique, and then the corner replace outside the crack. If you take it back just one last time and freeze it right now, I would have said, listen, because we saw this in dive solid. Now, it's a little bit different formation, but we said that these linebackers were solo gaps. Everybody might be saying, well, 53's got the B gap. But remember, the gaps change off the blocking scheme. So all of a sudden now when the center blocks back and they pull the guard, 53 doesn't have the B gap anymore. That gap becomes the tackle. They're blocking the defensive tackle. Now 53's got to transition into the front side A. So how quickly does he have to decipher that and figure out, I've got to get play side to the A gap? As quick as he can. High speed internet, Fran. The quicker, the better. That's the quicker. That's the fastest that we get the double team off the three technique. Because again, if the guard and the tackle can double the three longer, Then it just softens us up on the line of scrimmage. And all of a sudden now those two or three yard gains turn into five or six yard gains. And over the course of the season, over the course of the game, it relates to field position, everything. Now, this last run play that I have is called the down trap. And I would just tell our fans and everybody that's watching, this is something that we practice quite a bit. And and the reason is, is because of how we play our defensive front with Jim Schwartz. We're a vertical team right now with our defensive front. And when I say that is, guys, a lot of teams in this league, when teams get down blocks and, and pullers, they friction, what I call they friction a block. They squeeze a block. Our defensive front really rushes the passer and plays the run on the way to the quarterback. So when we are a vertical team with our defensive front, offensive coaches feel that the way you can attack the Eagles is let's trap block them or let's draw set them or let's run screen against them. Those are all running plays or pass plays that really take advantage of how we play our front. So we have to spend a lot of time on what we call a down trap because of how we do play our front. You're going to watch this play out right now. This is a quick hitting play. This is a downhill run play right there. And if you run it back right now, as you can see, what they're trying to do is they're trying to block back and they're trying to take their left offensive guard right as we see it. And they're trying to trap Fletcher Cox. And typically, guys, Fletcher would be up the field because, again, he's got a great push and great takeoff angle. So what it forces us to do is it forces 53 as a run-through guy. Now, when the guard pulls, they're trying to bring this right offensive guard to Nigel Bradham. And then what they're trying to do is they're trying to take the offensive tackle to the other linebacker. Okay. Now, they, I'll be honest with you, Atlanta screws the blocking scheme up. What they should do is they should release that right offensive tackle to 52. And then what 52 would do is he would put the tackle on his left shoulder pad and put it out to the safety. So now the tight end can either only block one. He's either got to block the defensive end, which keeps the safety free on the down, or he blocks the safety and now the end comes back inside and we put the ball outside to the defensive end. This was really a missed block or a missed scheme block by Atlanta, but it's one that we can always anticipate because of how our front plays. So I want to ask you a couple of things here, Coach, because with these trap plays, you know, the Eagles offense, they're so successful running these kinds of plays. For the defensive lineman, the guys up front, for Fletcher, in that situation, he's not touched. And with a guy with his get off, there are often times where he flies into the backfield and the offensive lineman struggles to get a finger on him. How does he, how hard is it for him to recognize, like, hey, this is, they're actually trying to trap me. I didn't just beat this guy off the ball. Well, it, it is. And, and, you know, that comes down to uh, DNA and, and who your mama and your papa are. As we all know, Fletch is a special guy that way. Uh, and it's a great recognition. But I do want to emphasize to him that even if the guard had gotten on his hip and trap blocked him, we still had the run fitted up the way we wanted to. We still had more than the law allowed on this particular run play. He just makes a great individual effort 
and seize it. But if you took a young defensive tackle fresh out of college on this thing, Fran, and you told him, hey, listen, this is your aiming point and this is your get off. Chances are that nine out of 10 times he's going to get trapped by the guard. And then now it just uh, depends on everybody fitting correctly off the blocking scheme in this front and this coverage. And I still think for us, we would have fit it correctly. I just think, again, it looks this way because, again, Atlanta missed it a little bit in terms of their blocking scheme. On those kinds of plays, you know, with those trap plays where the offensive lineman can basically just free release up to the second level. What are the coaching points there for a, a linebacker like Nigel Bradham? But I, obviously, I guess it kind of ch- doesn't change at all in terms of body type. If you've got a smaller, more athletic guy as opposed to a bigger, more physical guy, do you coach them differently to how to defeat that block? Or uh, is it going to be the same regardless? Not not really. I mean, what my point to Nigel would be is, again, and there's some tells when you get to trap teams, uh, teams that do it with the back at home. Uh, the back is usually a lot tighter than he normally is. Usually they're at seven yards on on stretch plays. All of a sudden, this guy moves up to five. Uh, they may get a tell off that, that, hey, here comes the trap. They may see a light-handed stance by the guard that tells them this guy's going to pull. There's a lot of little detail stuff, Fran, that we feed these guys that let them come. But at the, at the very essence of it for Nigel, it's Nigel, when you see the pull on the trap, blitz the A-gap. Because again, the front side guard is the guy that's responsible for you. And a lot of times, if you just freeze it right now, that front side guard, see him head fake the three technique before he comes to the backside linebacker? All he's trying to do is he's trying to invite Fletch to run up the field so the trap block from the opposite guard has an easier angle to pin him and block him out. So if Nigel just blitzes that A-gap, even though the guard's wrong and goes to the wrong linebacker, a lot of times he forces that block or beats that block before that guy can get a good leverage pin on him. So, Coach, we've covered so much here with with the run fit. Any kind of parting thoughts for the fans, for the listeners to uh, be able to say, okay, I feel like I've got a better sense of exactly what goes into being a good run defense team? Well, it takes a lot of practice and it takes a lot of want to, and everybody's got to buy into it's their job to make sure that these fits go correctly. But the one thing uh, I tell our guys, Fran, and, and, uh, and I know we tell our defensive front and everybody, uh, even though the NFL is a passing league by trade, you have to earn the right to rush the passer on third down. How do we get that done? We do it by stopping the run on first and second down. We get them into predictable situations, third and long, uh, hopefully, and now advantage defense. If if they can run the ball and get four or five yards and all of a sudden you're defending a lot of third and ones and third and twos, the advantage goes to the offense. All right, There's a multiple of things that they can do to pick up one or two yards on third down. So our run defense on first and second down earns us the right to rush the passer on third down. Well, Coach, thank you so much for joining us, giving us some insight here into what it takes to defend the run. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll talk to you again soon. Hopefully see you soon at the Novacare Complex. All right. Thanks so much, guys.